This recording is part two of a series of recordings on finding probabilities in a standard normal distribution table, where the standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and standard deviation of one, and phi of z is the cumulative distribution function for the standard normal distribution, showing the probability of a value in the standard normal distribution being less than or equal to z for all z, and visually it is the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z. This means, however, that if we have a question where we need to find the probability of z being greater than some number in the standard normal curve, or being between two values, we need to do a bit of other calculation, rather than just getting the value straight out of the table. So let's have a look at an example of each of those cases to see how this works. So in the first case, let's find the probability of a value z in the standard normal distribution being greater than 0.87. And let's just draw a sketch. This will be a very approximate diagram, really just to see what area we're looking at. So our standard normal curve is centered at 0. So 0.87 is going to be somewhere up here. And we're wanting the probability of z greater than 0.87. That is, we are wanting the area under this curve to the right of 0.87. But our standard normal table will give us the area to the left. That is, I'll shade in red what the actual table will give us. The table will give us that area there. So how do we work out our required probability? Or what is the relationship between these areas? And the total area under the standard normal density curve is 1. So therefore, our required area under the curve and to the right of 0.87 is going to be 1 minus that area to the left that we would get from the table. Or another way we could look at it is the probability of z being greater than 0.87 is 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to 0.87. So that's another way in which we could look at this. Therefore, we need to look at our table and find the area under the curve to the left of 0.87. Now remember that the integer part and first decimal place are shown in this column, and then up here we get the second decimal place. So 0 0.87, that's giving us 0 0.8079 in the actual table. That is, the probability of z being less than or equal to 0.87 is that number I just read from the table. So therefore, the probability of z being greater than 0.87 is 1 minus that area of 0.8079, giving us a probability of 0.1921. And that's the general way we must proceed. Whenever you want the probability of z greater than a certain value, if you're using a cumulative normal distribution table, it will be 1 minus the probability that you get from the table. Another case that can happen that requires a bit of thought is when you want the probability of z being between two values. So here we want the probability of z being between 0.34 and 1.48. So again, let's just visually draw a rough sketch of the situation there. Standard normal curve has a center of 0. So 0.34 will be somewhere there, let's say. 1.48, again, very rough diagram. Let's say that's about there. And we're wanting the area in between those values in this case. But again, we somehow need to frame this problem in terms of areas to the left so that we can get values from the table. Now if you think about this, one way we could go about this and the simplest way to approach this is we could consider the total area to the left of 1.48. We can get that directly from our table. And then from that, we don't want all of that area. We don't want the bit that's also to the left of 0.34. So what we could do then is say, OK, we don't want any area of that that's also to the left of 0.34. So 
So in other words, we could find the area to the left of 0.34 and we could then say it's going to be this total area minus that unwanted area that's also to the left of 0.34. That is, we're wanting the probability of z less than or equal to 1.48 minus the probability that z is less than 0.34 and both of those values can be read directly from our normal distribution tables. Let's find those probabilities now. Z equals 0.34 so 0.3 and then going along the second decimal place is 4 so that's going to be using those parts there so that's 0.6331 and then 1.48 You'll notice here I haven't shown the full table. For convenience I've just shown it down to 1.4 but the table would actually go on all the way down to z equals 3.0 in most cases with these tables. So 1.4 going across to 1.48 that's over here so that's got a probability of 0 0.9306. So that is putting all of it together the probability that z is between 0.34 and 1.48 is going to be the probability of z less than or equal to 1.48 which is the upper value minus the probability of z less than the lower value there of 0.34 in our interval which from the tables we saw was points in this case 9306 minus 0.6331 therefore our probability works out to be 0.2975 so these examples demonstrate what to do when you have to do a bit of manipulation to get your probability and as I have done here if in doubt as to how to proceed at first I strongly recommend you start with a sketch so that you can see exactly the area under the standard normal curve you'll be working with in terms of follow-on recordings, you might also like to look at a recording where you start with a normal distribution that is not a standard normal and convert to standardised scores before calculating a probability. So I'd recommend you to have a look at that recording also at this point.